If I was a movie producer, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ would have awakened this morning to the Imagine Dragons in 2012. I'm waking up to ash and dust. I wipe my brow and I sweat my rust. I'm breathing in the chemicals. I'm breaking in, I'm shaping up, then checking out on the prison bus. This is it, the apocalypse. Oh, welcome to the new age, to the new age. Oh, our text this morning. <laughs> but are we in the new age? Luke chapter 24, your gospel lesson, verses 1 through 12. But on the first day of the week, at early dawn, they went to the tomb, taking the spices they had prepared, and they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they went in, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were perplexed about this, behold, two men stood by them in dazzling apparel. And as they were frightened and bowed their heads, their faces to the ground, the men said to them, Why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and on the third day, rise. And they remembered his words, and returning from the tomb, they told all these things to the eleven and to all the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene and Joanna, and Mary the mother of James, and the other women with them who had told them these things to the, had told these things to the apostles. But these words seemed to them an idle tale, and they did not believe them. But Peter rose and ran to the tomb. Stooping and looking in, he saw the linen cloths by themselves, and he went home, marveling at what had happened. He is risen. He has risen indeed. An idle tale. An idle tale. My heart was excited this week because we participated in our daily family ritual at the dinner table. And my wife says to my son, tell me about your day. And he, as only a teenager can, we had English, we had math, we had, you know, he, he gives it to us. But then he says we had religion. And after each class, you know, what did you do in that class? And in religion, we talked about the different theories denying the resurrection. My heart got excited that we are t still teaching apologetics to kids, how to defend the faith. And so I wonder how many of us know those theories. So this morning, while you gather for what some have called, or even your Bible said this morning, an idle tale, I want to share with you this resurrection morning. Three theories telling you you should have stayed in bed this morning. That by God, just because Jesus got up at early dawn, I shouldn't have to be up. The first theory it's called the swoon theory. Now, since we're speaking of theories, you know there's also a theory that your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, was married to Mary Magdalene. And so you have to take into consideration that as I hear these things, I have a very interesting way of putting all of this together, if you haven't figured out. So when I heard the swoon theory, I, I went somewhere else, and I said, you all are taking this Mary Magdalene thing too far. Just making sure you're still awake. So the swoon theory, I know some of you are now smiling, just early morning check. The swoon theory is that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ did not actually die. He was not crucified, but rather he fainted, passed out. And that he wasn't actually dead. We place them in the tomb, and then he gets up. Now, 
This theory in and of itself, and I, and I teach you these things because I want you to be able to defend the gospel and the reason you believe. Let's play this out. He fainted. So then let's say he got up the cool air, you know, he's in the tomb. That cool air in his past out state didn't kill him. Rather, it revived him. He gets up, breaks a sealed tomb, all while he's half dead, right? Not to mention, your Bible tells you that they prepared his body. They anointed his body. They, in essence, embalmed him. Can I break that down for you? 75 to 100 pounds of spices are laid on your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So he just gets up from fainting, shakes off 75 to 100 pounds of stuff, breaks down a stone that's been sealed, fights two guards. Anybody want to keep swooning? It just does not make sense. So we put that one aside, and so that one doesn't hold water. So they introduce another one for us in, in, in efforts to tell you that you should stay home and that Luke chapter 24 is just a waste of your time. Now, this one you may be able to relate to. At How many of you were up at 3.05 when my alarm went off? Okay, shortly thereafter. Yeah, there's, you know, uh, the hallucination theory. You, you might resonate with that this morning. You've got to be seeing things. So they tell us that people were simply hallucinating that they saw Jesus. Now, I might buy that. But history tells us he showed himself to 500 people at one time. So you mean to tell me 500 people had the same hallucination? I'm going to just say that's some good stuff. <laughs> 500 people. And, and so scientifically, I had to wrestle with hallucinations. What are, what, what are we tripping on? And I just want to share with you for a moment. It says that in, in terms of hallucination, is a theory simply not plausible because it contradicts the laws and principles which psychiatrists say are essential to hallucinations, one of which they occur in people when there is a spirit of anticipation or hopeful expectation. Hmm. History would show us, the Bible would show us, that there was no expectation, get this, even from the disciples for Jesus to be alive. If you read your Bible, your, your, your disciples are tucked behind a door, locked, because they didn't want no part of this. <laughs> and you mean to tell me that all of us going to make this up. The next theory I call the Elvis theory. That's not what it's called, I'll tell you that, but you'll see in a moment. So my wife and I were watching the news, and they were telling us that Vegas is seeing a decrease in the number of people who are going to Elvis shows. And the number of Elvis impersonators. They're dying out. Now, you know, I like a good Elvis, right? So let's go with this impersonation theory. How many of you, just, just you know, by way of common sense, are going to try to duplicate somebody taking the equivalent of railroad ties and driving them through your arms. And then after that's done, put your feet together and allow them to do it to your feet. Also, you can walk around and say, you Jesus, I love the Lord. <laughs> I, pro I promise you I love the Lord. <laughs> that ain't about to happen. <laughs> if you don't get it now, I don't know what to tell you. But that's the text. So you have those three, but then our text does something. Our text tells us that they came to the tomb with those the same 
theories. And I wonder how many of us this morning come with those same theories, those same doubts, those same concerns. And so I ask myself, self? No, I didn't really say that. Can you tell me what regular radio station, contemporary radio station, shuts down for Easter and plays their music, plays Easter songs? I can show you some that shut down and play Christmas songs, but how many shut down and play Easter? Because we just don't believe it. We just don't get it. It's an idle tale. It sounds good, but pass me the chocolate bunny, right? It sounds good, but my waffles better be ready when I get out of here. How long are you going to be, brother? Right? I wonder if we fit in this category. Because honestly, we don't get it. I'm not trying to be mean, but how many of us came this morning with the same Sunday morning attitude? We got dressed mad with no music because that clock was two to three hours earlier than it usually is, and it's the only day I get to sleep in, and you mean to tell me this is the only time Jesus got up? Brother, please. <laughs> Laughter usually means I'm at home, right? I'm in somebody's closet. The text says they came with spices. How many of you have your bowl of spice this morning? Because we missed it. We missed it. Jesus had already been laid in the tomb. They went to see where Jesus was laid, and they watched them anoint his body already. Why? Why on Easter morning are you still carrying dead stuff? Did it really change this morning? Still walking around as if Jesus is dead. Or did we come this morning to witness a risen Savior, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? What is it going to take for you to fall on your knees and worship the teacher? And worship the rabbi? To worship Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? What else does he have to show you to put that bowl down? Well, I, I, I don't want you to get discouraged this resurrection morning because you're in great company. As I just shared with you, Mary Magdalene bringing her spices to anoint the dead. So be encouraged, you're in great company. But the text says something that boggles the mind. Mary, the mother of James, James, the brother of Jesus. You in a bad way when your mama don't believe your story. The disciples we discussed, locked behind a door. How many of us came as Thomas this morning? Yeah, I believe, I hear what you're talking. Sounds nice, you the preacher, you know, that's what we pay you to say. Better have a smile on it, too. Psych me up. Get me pumped up. But Lord, unless I see the nail prints, put my hand in your side, I will not believe. This is not an idle tale. Do we understand what he told us? Isn't that what he said? Do you remember what he told you? Didn't he tell you this already? He is alive. But honestly, how many of us, how many of us believe in Jesus Christ, him crucified, died, buried? Yeah, yeah, hard to finish that this morning, huh? And resurrected. Yeah, we confess it and we say it on that piece of paper, but that's just the order of service. 
How many of us believe it within our souls? How many of us are prepared to go out of here today victoriously? How many of us are prepared to drop that bowl of spice and run out of here and tell somebody, I have the victory? Yeah, that, that, that's what it's all for. I very badly, badly wanted to take my wife's advice this morning. She simply said, you ready for today? I said, yeah. She said, Jesus saves. What more do you need to say? Yeah. And that's the heart of it. But how many of us walk around clueless to the facts? We're going to walk out of here texting our way out of here. We're going to walk out of here guilt-ridden, heavy burdened, as if nothing changed, as if nothing shifted in our souls. And he's asking us, is this just a theory for you? Is it just the theory for me? Do you understand the power that he got up for you and for me? The power that contains for our souls. I know you believe that the stuff that you are going through, the baggage that you're carrying right now is, I'll say it for you, killing you. You've probably said it several times this week. This is just killing me. I can't take it. It's killing me. And for all of that which is killing you. Anybody want to finish? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he died for me. Yours is figurative. His was literal. Literally killed him. Yeah, yeah. But that's not how the story ends. That's not how it ends. He wanted it to kill him so it would stop killing you. So you didn't have to carry it. And so early on that first day, early that Sunday morning, he got up victoriously over everything that's killing you. And he wants you to take that which was killing you and tell somebody you nailed it to the cross, you buried it, and now you have overcome it and you are victorious this resurrection morning. Dear friends, I wonder if you're ready for the new age. Welcome. Welcome this morning to the new age of your life, because Christ has risen. He has risen indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all human understanding, guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.